Gearboxes, back with my obsession to build the world's best mini gearbox. I've got this little motor here, which actually has a worm gear on it. So I assume it must be possible, I don't think I've put that worm gear on there. But the problem I have with worm gears is here is the end play. It puts a load on the shaft and tends to pull the shaft out or push it in. And that I found destroys the motor for some reason. These open sided motors aren't very good anyway. The brushes in them, I don't know if we can see it. Oh, that's not too bad, that. The brush is actually a very fine piece of wire here. Can't see if that's actually still soldered on, but that's the brush wrapped around to form a spring. Pushes against the commutator down here. Problem is that these wear away quite quickly. But the motors are all right for the things I want apart from this problem of end play. I've tried with different motors. This one, for example, oh, what a beautiful picture of our worm gear. So what we have then is our worm gear here. This is sort of thing that could be made on a 3D printer. I've seen them this sort of size. But I've actually bought these in and tried to use them. They do have a problem that when they're on the shaft, we find that we get a small crack. Can we see it? Small crack. There you can see small crack going up where the shaft's been pushed in. So they're all right. It will hold all that for a while, a bit of super glue, I suppose. And it'll be okay. But they're very big and I want things that are small. I have built this in the past, which uses a small worm gear. These motors don't seem to be as bad as the open sided ones for end play. So here I've put the worm gear on, got a couple of thin pieces of plastic put holes in it, put them both together, taped them together so that the holes are in the right places that they go through on both of them and then glued the two pieces of plastic onto the motor when I've got the distance from the worm to pinion to be the right, get them in the right place, glue it on and then it gives us just the right distance. On this particular one, what I've done is to put a bit of, looks like a bit of an old pen, cut a section from an old pen, stuck it onto the gear, so that if I connect this up, use my trusty controller, this is just the battery and switch off an old electric screwdriver so if I press the button the lead goes up and down should do anyway there it is going up and down being pushed by this bit of pen which is here which is stuck onto this output gear I've used two gears here to reduce the speed down. The worm reduces it quite a lot, but then this just gives it that little extra, what will it be, four to one, something like that, to get it going slower. Don't know why I gave up with that. Well, I gave up because it's too big, it's bumbly, it's not what I'm looking for. And then, 
pulling things apart, love pulling things apart, came across this. It's actually the motor that drives the cassette tray. Not the cassette tray. Yeah, the cassette tray. Or is it on a... Yeah, on a video recorder. This, they used to have a tray that came in and out. So you could load the thing. So this gear up at the top... This one probably went on a linear gear on a rack so that the rack moved in and out. We have the pinion underneath which works on the worm gear. Under here we have the pulley on the motor and a pulley connecting to the worm. There's a little springy thing on the end which I assume is some sort of slip mechanism. So if the deck came, if somebody pressed it or the deck came all the way out, it wouldn't damage the worm and pinion. Nice thing, I love that. It's very good. It's good because it's quiet. Hardly hear it going. Absolutely beautiful. So, right, what am I going to do? Well, obviously, I'm going to try and copy it and build my own design. And here it is. What we've got is a pulley, a small pulley. Driving a larger pulley, that reduces it down. Depends on the ratio of the pulleys, so if it's, what, four or five to one, then this goes around a fifth the speed of that one. This pulley then goes on to my worm gear, a couple of metal spaces, top and bottom. And they're fastened on using a couple of strips of plastic so that that distance is approximately right. And then another couple of strips of plastic, which I can hold on, get the pinion in just so it mates with the worm, then glue that on, and finally we have what is, I thought, a very nice mechanism, apart from it's a bit big and bumbly with the pulley. Don't know if I didn't have a smaller pulley or it was a problem of bands that the smaller the pulley the further you've got to go away. I'm just using an elastic band which ain't good because when they're kept in tension they perish as opposed to the bands that were on the video recorder which are obviously some different material. But if I use this or try it, let's see it. If we try it, if I can get the plug in, is that right? Yep. Try that. Trusty controller. Goes quite fast. But of course there's no end load on the motor. So it should be alright, although once again you've got problems of brushes. So I like that, but I found that the plastic bands rotted away so I had to take away because they were stressed if I took the elastic band off and just left it, it was all right but then each time you came to use the model you got to put the elastic band back and then I looked on the internet I was actually looking at an electronic site but they'd used two worm gears and two pinions so we still have our pinion on our motor, which might give us a problem with end play. But that pinion control, uh, that worm controls this pinion, which has another worm on the same shaft, which drives another pinion. Wow, each pinion has got 16 gears on it. So 16 times 16, 
256 reduction. It's very bumbly as the one I built here. Found I had problems sticking it so I had to put wires through to hold it in place. The output shaft just goes into a 3mm outside diameter, 2mm inside so that that goes into there. It's a technique I've used a lot but it does need fastening onto the top. So that's what I've done there. I've fastened that onto the top and that then goes on. It does work. Much to my surprise. So if we join it up, connect it in and try. Does have the problem of worm gears. Of being a bit noisy. And this output shaft isn't actually held in, it's just put in place. Well, that was just a prototype, so I could move on to my next one, which essentially has a little box on the end. Same gear layout, but I've used a box, which was difficult to make. Put the two, put the back piece onto the motor, glued that in place. Got my two end pieces, put those on, held them in place until it, the worm gear was in contact with the pinion. Lots of super glue, being careful not to get it on my fingers. So often I've ended up holding something like this, only to find the super glues managed to get onto my fingers and I can't let go. Beautiful stuff if used correctly. It isn't brilliant, I'm not very happy about the physical construction of my little box, but it works and I need now to build a model to put it onto. Sometimes I need a shaft which comes at right angles to the motor, so it comes up this way Manage that just by rotating the output shaft. The output shaft was coming out this way on those two, but on this one, rotate the output shaft round. The pinion still meets with the worm gear, and so it gives me a vertical shaft, a vertical output for my motor. It does work. Let's try it. I like trying them. I love this. I love little motors. They're just magic. How do they work? Why should a little thing like that suddenly start turning because I press a button? There we have it. Beautiful thing. Oh, I just love playing. I could play all day with things like that. Where to go to from here? Well, obviously, I can't spend days building motors. If I wanted a few more, thing to do would be to go to a 3D printing. So I could 3D print. It'd have to be in two parts so I could get the bits together. Horizontal shaft goes along here. Vertical shaft goes up here. Easy enough if I have a separate end plate to push the horizontal shaft, goes one end through there, other end through here, push the two together, and that's then held. But the vertical one need a way of doing that, so I've used these horseshoe shaped pieces. Seen it used on other gearboxes, it's not my idea, I have very few ideas. But then this piece, the end piece, would have little extrusions to fit so that they held the vertical in place. Not too sure about the fancy little bits of horseshoe coming out. Might be better if they just went straight across. 
So this piece here would fit onto the motor. Just super glue on again. Vertical shaft here. I have to get my measurements right for that. Probably have to do two or three different prototypes to get that right. Same with the vertical one, a couple of prototypes for that. To see if I can get that right. So all in all, mm, might be two or three days work to do that. And as I haven't used my 3D printer, well my son's 3D printer, for a long time, I think I'll leave that until I've found projects for the gearboxes I've built. Yep, really enjoyed that. Really good. Just love little motors and gears and making them whiz round. Yeah. Right then, bye now. Bye.